Hey folks, it's Samad once again, uh, coming at you with another review, and this is of The Conjuring. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking me about this one, or Insidious 2. Insidious 2, uh, I'm not interested in it at the moment, because I've heard some things about it, and it seems like the plot that they're going with doesn't really seem the most interesting to me. Maybe when it comes out on DVD, and you know, weeks or months after that, I'll check it out, but... <sighs> Not in a rush anytime soon for it. Uh, <clears throat> Insidious 1, uh, I liked. Uh, didn't care for the last 30 seconds where it was pretty much a sequel bait ending. But you know, the rest of the film I liked. Uh, this one, heard a lot about The Conjuring, directed by James Wan. This is a guy who I liked as a director. I liked the first Saw film. Uh, the rest of the sequels I don't really care for, but I like the first Saw film. Uh, Death Sentence with Kevin Bacon I enjoy. Dead Silence, that was it was okay. Uh, and that's where I put, I put this film, uh, uh, The Conjuring. I put it with Dead Silence, which I, I thought was just okay. Uh, didn't love it. Uh, I do feel it's a bit overhyped, overrated. Uh, I was was never scared from the film. I was never terrified or horrified or creeped out from the film. The scares were pretty much stuff you'd expect. I mean, it's stuff I saw. I mean, not only in films like Poltergeist or uh, Legend of Hell House, The Changeling of Jersey Scott, The Amityville Horror, and to be honest, all those films I like more than this film. Hell, the House on Haunted Hill remake I liked more than this film. Insidious, I probably, I might, I probably would say I probably liked that film a bit more than this film. I mean, this film, granted, didn't have a sequel bait ending, had a happy ending. But on Insidious, I thought the uh, the stuff it did was more interesting. But I didn't hate the film. I just want to specify, I didn't hate the film. I thought the film was okay. I think that's because of two things. The second half of the film, I thought it got quite a bit better. And I like the two investigators. I mean, you have these paranormal investigators played by Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson was in Insidious. I like Patrick Wilson. Him and Vera Farmiga, I thought they did good. They started as Ed and Lorraine Warren, who were American paranormal investigators and authors associated with prominent cases of haunting. That reports inspired the Amityville Horror. Of course, this has one of those based on a true story bullshit, which is bullshit. But uh, I don't buy it. That ever happened. But whatever. Everything is based on a true story. <laughs> but pretty much, I mean, it's hard to say, well, you I've seen it all before. Because everything you've seen and I've seen before. It's just the first half of the film I thought kind of got bogged down and I just I never was creeped out or scared or frightened or at times tried to do those jump boost stairs like uh, Sinister which I didn't like Sinister. This I, I like more than Sinister. I know well what about compared to horror films of today? Well yeah the horror films of today suck. Evil Dead Foot remake sucked. Has some good gore but that's it. Terror remake don't give a fuck. Mama don't give a fuck. Curse of Chuck D. Sutt. World War Z, that's more of an action film. I consider that more of an action film. I like World War Z, but I think I'd call it an action film instead of a horror film. Frankenstein's Army Sutt. I mean, but, uh, I mean, the first half of the film, I mean, it starts off with interesting because you have these two investigators by Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson and talking about this previous case involving this Annabelle doll creepy looking doll which <laughs> seems to be a James Wan thing because you had Saw which had a doll Dead Silence had a doll In City, I haven't seen Insidious in a while did Insidious have a doll? I'd be fucking surprised if they didn't but it seems like oh, really James Wan with the, the doll thing again? Yeah it has a creepy looking doll and you know, the simple stuff where these uh, girls are telling the investigators about what happened, that, you know, they found a room 
with like crayons and shit on it. They threw it out. They heard pounding and they found a, a note. Uh, and you get a little bit of backstory that there was an exorcism before and the, the woman, Vera Farmedia, got a little bit freaked out by it. Patrick Wilson doesn't really want her involved, but she's like, hey, we're in this together. I thought the, the two did work well together. That's why I liked their bits. I thought they worked well together. But then it comes to the family, and yeah, these two, Lily Tomlin and... What's his name? Ron Livingston. They move in. Pretty much his place, this farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. And it's not that the acting was bad, but at the same time, I didn't really care about the family. I was more interested in the investigators. And throughout the whole thing, I'm like, okay, when are we going to get back to the investigators? When are we going to get back to the investigators? I know we're supposed to stay with this family because we're supposed to care about them. I, I really... The acting wasn't bad. I, for me, just me, I didn't give a fuck about the family. I was more interested in the investigators. And what was happening, I don't know, just sort of... For the first half of the film, I know it's supposed to build up because it's an old school horror film, but... You know, I enjoyed the change in the George C. Scott. I enjoyed Legend of Hell House with Ronnie McDowell, but I just, you know, it's 2013. I've seen it. You know, I've seen it dozens of found footage films. Okay, a door swings. Okay, uh, she's the mom's playing hide and seek with her kid. She's blindfolded, and the closet sort of thing opens up, and you see a pair of hands go like this, and she looks in. There's no one there. Okay. So I, I swear I saw some of the stuff in Insidious, and I liked it in Insidious better, to be honest. I thought I thought Insidious had a bit uh, creepier images than this film, at least in my personal opinion. Uh, hell, I mean, Paranormal Activity three. I don't like Paranormal Activity three, but it had certain scenes that, like, wow, like all the furniture just flying down out of the blue, and certain something and so forth. <clears throat> but here's like literally little things. Uh, a girl thinks she sees someone in the corner and the parents come in and they find no one there. Their dog dies. I, I guessed it too. I'm like, that dog's going to die, right? Yep, the dog died. She gets these bruises and I'm like, okay, uh, Lily Tom's getting the bruises. She's going to be possessed, right? Yep, that's what happens. So... She pretty much, she gets locked in the cellar, and she, you know, one of the posters, you have Lily Tomlin with the match, and it's a pair of hands doing like this, and it goes to black. And a girl upstairs gets yanked by her leg. Might have saw that. I, can't, I shouldn't say I've seen that before, because we've seen everything before. It's just, okay, you know, I'm not really scared, I'm not really creeped out, and... You know, this goes on for about 40-some minutes of the film until, well, more like uh, they arrive. They finally, uh, Lily Talon goes to a meeting that these two investors are teaching a class. And she asks them to come to her place, and they do. And Vera Farmiga feels that there's something up here. So, you have a shot that you know, I, James Wan sort of did this kind of stuff in cities as well, where, you know, for example, they're outside and she's looking at Patrick Wilson, and then when it comes to Patrick Wilson, you see a pair of lays behind him. It's just like an insidious where the girl looks up, and then right behind Patrick Wilson is that demon looking thing, which I thought that was kind of a cool design. I know people laughed at it, but I thought it was kind of a freaky design. I thought that was freakier than anything in this film, to be perfectly blatantly honest. But you see like a pair of legs, and you get the idea that she was hung from that tree that you see in the other posters. You see like a tree with a noose on it. And you get the bad story that uh, there were witches, and one hunt herself, and possessed the mom to kill the kid, a kid, and that's why a little girl sees this kid, and of course, you know that sooner or later they don't try to possess Lily Tomlin to kill her kid, which reminded me of Amityville Horror. 
which the original, I will admit, I even like the original Amityville Horror more than this film. I don't know, the first half of the film I just found kind of boring. Unless it was with the little bits with the two investigators. And part of me is wishing, why don't we just have the entire film from these two point of view? We see a couple cases they were doing beforehand, and then they introduce this, and they find out what's going on. And, oh yeah, the film takes place in the 70s. The early 70s. And that's why I kind of got interested in the film, was when it was like an hour in when they're finally doing the investigation. When they're finally doing the investigation, they have this other guy and this cop there to, to help them out. And they're setting up these cameras, these old school cameras, and it's like, okay, if anyone comes by or anything comes by and the temperature drops, they'll take a picture. Um, they have an old school uh, photography. They go down the cellar and they're investigating what's going on. And that's when stuff s starts to ratchet up. I mean, I know that's the point of the film, but it's like from an hour to the ending, those last 40-some minutes, that's what I liked about the film. The, the first hour, I didn't really give a fuck about. I mean, the doll thing, yeah, a little bit creepy, but it's like, I wasn't really creeped out because, you know, James Wan, you know, saw Dead Silence. He does creepy dolls a lot, so it's just, yet again, a creepy doll. And I'm not really, like, steered to dolls. <clears throat> um, you have this scene where the little girl sleepwalks, and they find this little passage behind the war the, the wardrobe thing. Uh, Verifer Media enters, and she falls through. And which I thought was a cool shot, how she falls through, like, floor after floor. She falls to the cellar. And I'm thinking, like, Patrick Wilson is banging on the walls. Hey, hey. And I'm thinking, Patrick Wilson, why don't you look in the cellar first? You guys know of the cellar. You know the cellar is a big, evil center of the house. Why don't you pound on the wall? You can tell she fell through. Why don't you look in the cellar first? But it takes him, like, five minutes long enough for the, his woman to look around. And, oh, there's a woman, a dead woman. And let me guess, when she turns around, it's going to pop out boop. Yep. Turns out, Papa Boo, and then it takes him like forever to get to the cellar. I'm like, why, Patrick Wilson? You should be smarter than that. That would have been the first place I looked if someone I know fell through. And previously, we had known, oh, the cellar's a fucked up place. Go to the cellar first and check. But hey, what do I know? It's based on a true story. Yeah, bullshit. But yeah, some crazy stuff happened, like. The one of the daughters gets her hair yanked and she's pulled this way and pulled that way and pulled through here and there. I'm like, okay, some good physical stuff there. And they talk about how they want to be an exorcism. They want to take some this evidence to the church. And then even their own daughter, the investigator's daughter, is kind of attacked. And like this chair is about to fly into her face, and Patrick Wilson gets his daughter out of the way. Okay. And you find out the family moved out, but Lily Talon, she's been possessed. She takes two of her daughters and goes back to the to the house. And the two investigators get there along with the cop and the other guy, Drew, played by Shannon Cook. And uh, Ron Livingston, the husband, they all go down back to the house. They rush to the house. And this is an exciting finale, I will admit. It's an exciting finale. Uh, the... A cop gets a shotgun, blows the door open, they get in, they find that the mom is trying to kill a dog because she's possessed, they get her and they tie her down to a chair or try to, and he, Patrick Wells is like, I gotta do this exorcism myself, and, you know, they're, they're tied to the chair, they tie her to the chair, and she's shaking the chair, noises, things are, like, birds are flying to the house, you have... Uh, there's a moment where uh, Lily, Ta Lily Taylor, who is possessed, flips the chair upside down and then is hanging upside down while sitting in the chair upside down. Okay, that's an interesting shot. Makes this drawer almost try to fall on Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson has to dodge out of the way. There's a shotgun of the cop. 
that tries to shoot Patrick Wilson. The cop pushes him out of the way. The cop gets bit on the cheek. Um, yeah, some you know crazy stuff happening here. I'm like, okay, that's cool. You got some crazy stuff happening in this exorcism. Exciting. I like this moment where the sheet like tears open. You see the ugly part of this. Uh, but Lily Tyler, her face has changed, and you see it revealed when the head of the sheet opens up. I like that shot. I like that. She escapes, finds out where Dar is ready to kill her, and they're pretty much doing the exorcism and saying, "Hey, you can fight Lily Tomlin, Lily Tomlin, Lily Taylor. You can fight for her. You, you know, fight for yourself. Get rid of this." Uh, Patrios is able to complete the exorcism. Lily Taylor cries and you know purges. And pretty much is a happy ending. Things are okay now. Uh, the investigators go off and they mention how they're going, there's this case in Long Island, probably the Amityville Horror. Yeah, Amityville, I should mean. And, uh, you know, the family is safe and, you know, that's the movie. And I, I like the second half of the film because I like the two investigators. I like the two investigators, Lorraine and Ed Warren, played by Vera Farmita, Patrick Wilson. I thought they played well off each other. They were likable. I thought they did a good job, those two. I kind of wish the... Not even kind of. I wish the film was, from their p point of view, 100%. Like, we saw more of their behind-the-scenes, and it was more just concentrating on them investigating. Like, maybe 15 minutes in, boom, they're at the house and investigating. But you know, it takes about an hour for them to actually do the investigation and like 45 minutes before they actually get to the house and look around and they start the investigation and like an hour in, it kind of lost me a bit there. And not even a bit, it kind of lost me. I mean, if I shut this movie off an hour in, this would have been a rant. Because I'm like, for an hour, I don't see much of shit happening that I haven't fucking seen before or I haven't... Okay, a girl looks at the wardrobe and sees a crazy batshit woman on top. Okay, and she jumps down like a, you know, ah, my, you know, punch her in the face then, drop kick her in the face out the window. Uh, you know, noises, okay? I just, I don't get the scary, terrifying, horrifying, creepy aspect of it. I don't think it's a fantastic film because I thought the first hour was kind of slow and tedious and kind of boring. Other than when we had shots of the two investigators. But the second half of the film I liked. I liked the second half. I liked when they're actually investigating. I was interested in these two. I was interested in them setting up the cameras and taking place in the 70s. How they, uh, you know, it's not like today where you have all the technology that you can get your hands on. And the physical things like the Vera Farmiga falling through floor after floor and falling to the cellar, or the one of the family's daughters being pulled around the room by her hair and being slammed here and here is well shot. I will admit it's a well shot film. It's a well edited film. You can understand what's going on. There's certain shots like in the finale where you see the Vera Farmiga entering the house or exiting the house and the camera's like upside down. Well, actually, more like. Yeah, it's upside down, and it, it, the camera goes up to this other guy, Drew, who's looking for the missing daughter. That's something that happens in the ending. Like certain camera shots like that I like. So I like the two leads. I like certain camera shots and how some things were filmed, like the daughter being dragged around most a lot of times in one shot. I'm like, okay, that's cool that they did that. It wasn't herky-jerky, epileptic editing and shaky cam. I appreciate that. I... Uh, I do think the score was kind of overbearing, like just that type of score that really tries to say, "Hey, this is scary," and I'm like, you know, a little subtleness can go a long way sometimes. Sometimes it works, but to me, the the score at times were so overbearing. I'm like, okay, you know, settle down a bit. The exorcism scene I liked, you know, some. Actual physical actions happening. That was cool. No sequel bait ending. I mean, if you want to say that, oh, our next case is in Long Island. But, I mean, like an actual sequel bait ending. I'm like, okay, cool. It's a happy ending and nothing wrong with that. And It's not a film I would buy. It's not a film I would watch again. But it's, you know, I liked it. I, didn't, I liked it okay. 
I'm not mad about it. I'm not upset about it. The fir I mean, the first half of the film, the first hour of the film, I could leave it. But the last, you know, 30, 40 minutes, I thought were were decent. I just, I didn't find it, you know, as scary. I didn't really find it scary at all or creepy at all or horrifying or at all. Um, so the scariest move of all time, I disagree with that. Best horror film of the year? Well, hmm, this or Curse of Chucky or VHS2 or Frankenstein's Army. Wow. Don't really have much of a competition. <laughs> but, uh, and Cities 2, I don't know. I'll check that out one day, but not anytime soon. But yeah, The Conjuring, it just, I thought it was okay. I liked it. I liked it all right, but, you know, yes, I know it's meant to be more old school. I understand that. I appreciate that, but at the end of the day, I thought it was just okay. You know, I I, I still think it's a bit overrated. It's a bit overhyped. I mean, I don't think it's the best of the best of the best. I thought it was okay. But, uh, yeah, it, that's the conjuring. It was okay for me. I'm sure most of you saw it and loved it and praised it, and that's fine. I don't hate the film. It was a time waster. I, I liked the, th the third act. Uh, that's really why this isn't a rant, is because of the third act. Because of some of the physical actions and the two leads. I like the two investigators, and I wish the film was centered completely on them and not on Lily Taylor's family, which I didn't really care one way or another. To be perfectly honest, I wasn't really interested in the family. It wasn't bad acting, it just wasn't really interesting to me. The two investigators were more interesting. But uh, that's just my opinion. But either way, that's just my little review of the, Not even little, it's 20 some minutes long. My review of The Conjuring. Um, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you around for another review. Later.